I'm going to give you a little mini lesson now on the mechanics of presenting. Because this is quite easy to do in a short space of time and it's something that you can take away with you after this session, which you can use immediately. We go into a lot more depth than just what I'm about to teach you, as you heard from my earlier presentation. But this is something we can practice straight away and it's a lot of fun. I think everyone has been distributed these little blue cards, the six impact points for persuasive power. Does everyone have that in front of them? Everyone got that? Good, all good, got that? And I have a Japanese version. Yeah, if everyone have a Japanese version, we have that too. You'll see here, it's got six things. The first one says six seconds each and six seconds. What that means about eye contact is that we should engage with our audience and look at the people we're talking to for about six seconds. Now, if we look longer than that, for example, if I come over here and if I stare at you and just keep staring at you and keep staring at you, you become very uncomfortable. Why is this crazy guy <laughs> staring at me, right? So if you make it too long, it's like, whoa, too much pressure. But often you'll see politicians do type of fake eye contact, you know, like one or two seconds here and one or two seconds there. And one or two. It's not engaging with anyone. What we're suggesting is you speak to people one on one, even though it's a big audience, you speak to people one on one. Like I've been doing that all tonight. If you notice, I've, I'm looking at you and I speak to you for about six seconds. Then I pick up somebody else and I talk to them. So I'm talking to you one at a time for about six seconds. And the six sectors is trying to cover everybody in your audience. Now, you may have seen this, I see it a lot. Often people, by the way they're standing when they're presenting, they tend to neglect part of the audience. They tend to look at one section, it might be the front row, or it might be half of the audience, or a third of the audience. I was at a function recently, I was the second speaker. The speaker before me was a very, uh, not so deep, but rather wide venue. And just the way that uh, person was speaking, he actually neglected 50% of the audience. He didn't even look at them. He only spoke to this half of the room. So we, we try to make sure that everybody in the room is connected. So, and I, I'm from Australia, so I don't know much about baseball, but I've seen it on TV in Japan. And they've got this thing called the baseball diamond. And they notice they've got left field, they've got center field, and they've got right field. And they've got the inner field, and they've got the outer field. So if you think about that construct, you've got six pockets of people in any audience. So the idea is that no one gets left out. So you try and engage people in different sectors of the room so everyone's spoken to. And if it's a very, very big auditorium, it doesn't matter. If you pick someone out the back there on the left-hand side, you look at one person, at that distance, the 20 people sitting around that person all think you're looking at them. Because at that distance you can't tell. So everyone feels the speaker is trying to engage with me personally. So you build a very nice connection. So six seconds of eye contact, very helpful, and six seconds. The second one there is talking about uh, faith. Animated projects energy. When I did that demonstration earlier, you know, no action of faith, eyes looking down, no voice power, energy levels right down. It's hard to build persuasive power. So what we're talking about here is you use your face. So if you're happy or it's good news, you smile. You know, if it's something surprising, you show surprise. You show something that lights up the face. So that, again, that's projecting a message. And if you just have a stone face or a flat face that doesn't show that, you're missing out a great opportunity to get a message across. So we try and get the face involved. Then the next one there is uh, voice. Now, I said before that Japanese has got a bit of disadvantage because it's a rather monotone language. However, you can put power into your words and you can take the power right down. So that power in and power out gives you a range of variation in Japanese or English. And you can make it really quick or you can slow 
down in Japanese or English, which again gives you variation. So, you know, often people are throwing numbers around, you know, like it was 5.8% or something. Oh, it was 5.8%. Or it was 5.8%. When I slow it down like that, it gives that 5.8% number much more power than if I just say 5.8%. Things like that, slow down, speed up, power in, power out. Even with a monotone language like Japanese, you can get variation enough that your audience is not going to go to sleep. Okay? The next one here is we're talking about gestures. And it says there, basically 15 seconds. Now, it's very strange. If you make a gesture and you just leave the gesture there, for some reason, after about 10, 15 seconds, it just has no power anymore. The power of that gesture has just died and it just becomes annoying to an audience. Right? So we've got to learn to bring gestures on and take them off again. And sometimes presenters have no gestures. So they're not getting the ability to bring out power to back up a word or an idea with the gestures that are there. Or if you're talking about numbers, you know, two or three percent of presentations are stimulating. You see? Just by doing that, I give, I hold it up about head height, I don't move it, it adds to the power of what I'm talking about, the number and the image go together. So gestures, like this gesture for example, is an incredibly powerful gesture of Believe me, trust me, because from ancient times, I come in peace, I have no weapons, I'm not going to be a threat to you, you can trust me, see, I have got nothing hidden. So when we do that gesture, it's a universal symbol of trust. This one though, you know, we're all running around living in caves, and uh, we meet somebody else from another tribe, we might suddenly pull out a rock or a stick or a big bone and hit them on the head and steal their food or steal their, their, their family, take over their, their territory. So we've learned over many centuries to be very careful about people we can't see their hands. But you'll see many presenters, many speakers speak like this. They do it because they don't know what to do with their hands. Now I said before, I'm Australian. And you'll see this amongst even very high level CEOs of Australian companies, they'll put the hand in the pocket, the guys anyway, right? They put the hand in the pocket because they don't know what to do. They're really confused. They put both hands in the pocket. They don't know what to do with their hands. You don't need to worry about the hands. Just leave your hands by your side. If you're using your face and you're using your voice and you're using your eyes, people don't notice what you're doing with your hands. And when you're very self-conscious, that's where you worry. Oh, what do I do with my hands? Right? Because you're focused on you. What we're teaching is project out and focus on your audience rather than on you. And then it switches the whole game completely. So this doesn't matter. You just bring it on, bring it off. 15 seconds about max. Next one. Pause. Now, I had a... Are you, where are you from? India. India. I had a, a colleague of yours from India in this very class and very fast speaker very quick speaker and no pause. Once he started, he would speak continuously for five minutes. Zero pause. Now, when you're speaking like that and very quickly, oh my goodness, it's so hard to follow what's going on because every idea is replaced by the next one and you can't remember three ideas back, you're lost. But as a result of this training, oh, he improved so much. He slowed down. He put in little pauses. It became so much clearer. It became so much more convincing. What a contrast. And we can all benefit from that. When you put a little gap in there, like I just did then, it gives your audience time to absorb the message. It also gives you time to regroup and think about what you want to say next. Now, I think Japanese people have a big advantage because in your culture, you're really good at dealing with silence compared to foreigners, you know. Foreigners think we have to keep talking all the time and if there's no talking going on, 
rapport is not working and feels a bit uncomfortable, the relationship's not quite going well, so we keep talking to fill out the gap. But you know, Japanese people are all very comfortable with silence, you don't feel that pressure. So for you, you have a natural advantage to have pauses when you speak, so you should use that. Give your audience time to absorb the message. And then I think finally, the last one here talks about posture. And I'm talking about 50-50 weight displacement. Now, I was teaching a class yesterday. It was an asset management company, a very big company, Japanese company. And I talked about 50-50. And you think that's a pretty easy thing, right? 50% here, 50% here, and the weight. So I teach this. The first presenter gets out here. Suddenly, the stance is like this. This does not look professional, it looks very casual. And we have these habits, you know, and some people want to stand like this. It looks very arrogant. It looks very, you know, Hanagatagai type of problem, you know, very arrogant. That shoulder width apart is nice. And try and have the feet facing straight, because even if you just turn the feet slightly, your body orientation goes this way. So now, you have to really turn your head or your body to pick up people on the right side, and you're unlikely to do it. You're better to have your feet facing here, and then your head just turns slightly, you can pick up the whole room. You don't have to sort of, you know, go like this to get the whole room. You just stand here and use your head. But the 50-50 weight gives you that stability, but also stand tall, look professional. Very easy, aren't they?